Hello, uh, this is uh, 441, uh, ME and 441, and we are today going to talk about how to estimate the strength versus number of cycles fatigue curve for an ideal specimen. Of course, I'm kind of jumping into the middle of it because I'm expecting you to know what I'm talking about. This has to do with fatigue. So what we do for fatigue testing is we use a very specific kind of material and specimen which is shown here. You can see that it has a nice smooth curve, uh, you know, and all these dimensions are fixed. By the way, this is in, uh, this is in FPS units. Book has SI units, so you can take a look at that. Okay, so this is what is called the RR Moore bending specimen, rotating bending specimen. And uh, what will happen is, in this section, you will get uniform uh, bending moment because we are doing a four-point bend. We talked about all of this in class, so I think you know what I'm talking about. We're doing a four-point bending. And when you do that and you plot number of cycles along the x-axis and the strength and the stress that you applied along the y-axis, you will see two things. First, if you apply ultimate tensile strength, it will fail in the first cycle. That's 10 to the 0. Can you see that? Up to this point, what will happen is per cycle, you will accumulate a lot of plastic strain. So in this region, macroscopic plastic strain in every cycle. So this is called low cycle fatigue and this knee, this point is in the text it is referred to as SF, okay. Um, um, that's, that's the name in the text and then as you, if you want more life, you have to lower the stress. I mean this is true for us also, right. If you want to live longer, lower your stress level, right. So in the same way, if you want to, if you want your part to last longer, you'll have to lower the stress level. And if you lower the stress level, it goes on and on. And if you are below this particular thing, which is called the endurance limit, you will essentially get infinite life. Not for all materials, not for aluminum. In fact, for aluminum, it keeps going down like that. And by the way, the, the reason why it looks linear is this is log scale. Okay. By the way, you can take almost any curve and if you take enough number of logs, everything will look linear. So it's not a big deal. But what I want you to understand is that the spread this way is huge. This way spread is small. So first lesson. So given life needed, stress level can be calculated very accurately. On the other hand, given stress level, life is not very well known. But very is all, you know, this is all vague stuff. So I wanted to understand that reasonably. What I mean by that is, um, you can get one decimal place accuracy in your stress. You can tell me whether stress is like 100 me megapascals or 200 megapascals or something like that. You cannot really say whether it should be 147.63 megapascals. That kind of accuracy we won't get. Life on the other hand, really you can only say whether it's 100, 200, 300, you know, 10 to the 3, 10 to the 4, 10 to the 5 cycles. Beyond that, you cannot really say much. Okay, so I want you to understand that the spread is huge sideways. Spread is not very, uh, very huge on the, on the vertical direction. Okay, so 
the thing is we can fit the curve by a power law the book gives and this is equation 6.13 6-13 on page and this varies varies with the textbook but on our textbook it is 285 I'm giving a question mark because it's not the same in all textbooks, but in this particular textbook, but the equation number is correct. Equation number 613, it tells you that the fatigue life at any particular value of number of cycles is given by A times N to the B. That's easy, right? Given that N lies between 10 to the 3 and 10 to the 6. <coughs> so, so if you know, if you know A and B, you can find number of uh, strength. So, if you know A, B and N, you can find uh, how many, what's the stress that you can allow. This is for ideal, we will worry about the non-ideal case. So, we are going to put a prime here. This is for ideal rotating bending. So, what we are going to do now is to rewrite this in a way that uh, is easy for us to find out. So, first thing is we non-dimensionalize it. And write it as S prime n over S ultimate tensile strength equals uh, n over n naught a times n a bar times n over n naught to the b. That's how we're going to write it. Okay, so you can see that. A is related, so B is the same, A equals A bar S U T divided by N naught to the B. Okay, our particular choice, so what we are going to do, how do you find A and B? How to find A and B? We know that we need to know S n prime at n equal to 10 to the 3. That is this point. And we need to know this point. If I know two points, I can draw a line, right? So that's all we are we're trying to say. Okay. So the other one is. Yes, endurance, this is at 10 to the 6. So, if I plug in, so what I should get is S yes, uh, 10 to the 3 prime over S U T equals um, A bar times n over uh, 10 to the 3 over 10 to the 3. So, we are going to pick n naught equal to 10 to the 3. So, this is 1 to the b. So, this is a bar. So, this is the ratio of endurance limit to the ultimate tensile strength. If you know this ratio, we are done with a bar. Okay. So, we are going to this ratio is actually given in the text. So, in the text, this ratio is called F.
and so we have s n prime divided by s u t equal to f n over n naught to the power b. This f is given by s f prime over s u t and is given in table sorry figure 618. So, I will show you that thing, there it is, 